Well, who can live with God? That is what we are created for, to, to live in God's presence. But ever since Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, we have not enjoyed that. So who can live with God? That's the question that our psalm this week asks. Welcome to this week's midweek meditation. It's a short time we pause every Wednesday to, to ponder God's word and to pray together. And you are very, very welcome, whether it's your first time or you've been a regular since the beginning. Now, this week we're looking at Psalm 15, which asks the question, who can live with God? I'm going to pray for us and then I'll read the psalm. Let's pray. Our loving Father, thank you. Thank you for your most precious word. Please, would you open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to, to see the beauty of Christ now in your word. Amen. So Psalm 15. Let me read that. It's a Psalm of David. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbour, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honours those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest, and does not take a bribe against the innocent, he who does these things shall never be moved. Who can live with God. Who can live in God's presence, enjoying the life and the holiness and the beauty of God's presence? That's what we were made for. If you remember the beginning of the Bible, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, who was there? God walked with them. The Lord walked with them in the cool of the day. God's presence. They lived with God. Eden was, was up, up this hill and they dwelt with God on his holy hill. It's a picture of Eden. But we all know that they ate from that forbidden fruit and they were cast out. So how can we return to Eden is the question, really. How can we live again with God? And that's the question verse 1 asks. Look at verse 1. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? Uh, the tent, that's a picture of the tabernacle, the symbolic place of God's presence through the wilderness years for God's people. Uh, the t holy hill, that's the temple mount, again, the symbolic place of God's presence, but it was never meant to be the, the real thing. It's a picture of what Eden was meant to be. A place where human beings lived with God in his presence, enjoying his life and holiness and light and beauty. Who can live with God? That's the question. I wonder how you'd answer that question. It's tempting, tempting to think, isn't it, to, to begin to list the things we do. And that's what the psalm seems to do at first, isn't it? Have a look at how David answers the question. Who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? Verse 2. He who walks blamelessly does what is right and speaks truth in his heart. Verse 3, he doesn't slander with his tongue, does no evil to his neighbour. Verse 4, he despises the vile but honours those who fear the Lord. In verse 5, doesn't put money interest, doesn't take a bribe. It seems to be a list of things that we need to do. What is this psalm um, saying? What's the answer? It says, those who can dwell in God's presence, who can live with God, are those who honour the Lord, live in reverent devotion to the Lord, both in inside in our hearts and outside in our lives. Now we immediately read that and we think, oh, huh, I, 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 can, I can do that. I mean, verse 2, he walks blamelessly, he does what is right. Well, I, I do what's right. Or do we? Never put a step out of place in your life? Verse 2, he speaks truth in his heart. He says, oh yeah, well I speak truth. I don't, I don't lie. What about in the heart? Mm, not so easy as I want to get to the beginning of the heart. On the inside. 
doesn't slander with his tongue. He always spoke on what's right. It, it, very easy to begin to read this and think, actually, ooh, it begins to cut, doesn't it? We haven't always walked blamelessly. Our hearts haven't always been truthful. The way we've spoken of others or to others haven't always been loving and gracious and truthful, have they? How have we dealt with our money and our finances? It's probably some things we maybe feel guilty about. See, here's the challenge. This disqualifies us, doesn't it? And actually, if it was to be, okay, we need to do these things, it would be a burden that would be too heavy for us to bear. And we would never be able to, to live in the presence of God. So we need to ask the question, who can live with God? See, the psalm doesn't want to burden us down this list of rules that we'd never be able to keep. And so we feel in despair. It wants to give us hope because look at the end. He who does these things shall never be moved. It wants to offer us security and joy in the presence of God. So who can do this? Here's where we need to read the psalm in light of the whole of scripture. Earlier in the psalm, in the psalms, psalm 2, God speaks of somebody he has set on his holy hill. Listen to this. Psalm 2, verse 6. The Lord says, as for me, I've set my king on Zion, my holy hill. How his king lives there. Who's that? Well, ultimately, it's Jesus. And Jesus is the man who has walked blamelessly. Perfectly flawless. Jesus is the man whose heart has always been truthful. He is the man who always spoke words of truth and grace and love. Jesus is the man who always hated evil and loved what's good. Jesus, the eternal son of God, became a man and he lived the life that we should have lived. And where is he now? He's risen from the dead. He's gone up, he's ascended into heaven, he sits at the Father's right hand. Jesus now lives with God. He now dwells in God's presence. Who shall, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? The answer is Jesus. Now, does that mean, okay, well, we just follow Jesus, copy him. But again, if we were to act like that, it would be a burden too heavy for us to carry. So what is our hope? Here's a wonderful thing. Jesus didn't live the perfect life for himself. He did it for his people. You see, why did God the Son become a man while at the same time remaining the Son of God? Why did he do that? Jesus took all that was ours so that we might have all that was his. You see, if we are one with Jesus, if we are participants with Jesus, partake of him, share in him, all that is his becomes ours. That perfect record of the blameless, perfect life, it is ours. We are clothed in his righteousness and clothed in his righteousness, we approach the throne of God. We come into his presence. See, if we are one with the Son, the one who is Son by nature, we become sons by grace, sons and daughters by grace. And we now have access to, to God's presence now. We can come to him in prayer. And on that final day, we will be welcomed into his presence. So far from burdening us, this psalm gives us real hope. We read this and we look up to heaven. And what do we see? We see the Son of God, the Lord Jesus, who became man for our salvation. We see him who lived the life we should have lived on our behalf and who died the death that we should have died, who who's taken the burden for our sin. And if we have trusted him, we are one with him. And all that is his is ours. And one day that will be a reality in all its fullness as we dwell in the presence of God, restored to something that's even better than Eden, in the presence of God. Well, I'm going to pray for us 
And then I'll leave you to ponder and reflect for yourself. Let's pray. O oh Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? Father, thank you that Jesus has ascended and sits at your right hand, and he does. And thank you that because he lived the life we should have lived and died the death that we should have died, we too may enter. One with him we can enter. Father, please would we keep our eyes looking up to Christ, seated in heaven, and find our hope and our future in him. We ask this in his name. Amen. Well, thank you so much again for tuning in. We'll be back again next week. Uh, I look forward to seeing you then. But for the moment, why not take a moment to pause and ponder and pray for yourself? Look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you.